That's not even possible to follow. It's not possible. But we're going to follow it anyway. Hey, good morning, everybody. That's right. Andy's in the chat. Andy woke up on her own today. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be tough. All right. Welcome aboard, everybody. Welcome aboard on a lovely Wednesday morning. That's right. It is a lovely Wednesday morning. Welcome into the chat room, everybody. We'll give you a chance to find your seats. We got the draft tonight with Cha Cha at seven o'clock, and uh, away we go. So, and even though it is the All Star thing, we got a lot to talk about. We got the trading thing coming up, and uh, everybody else, and the whole deal. So, uh, I will tell you, had a lovely time yesterday in Manhattan with uh, Craig Mish, and uh, did a show with Craig and. Uh, it, let's put it this way, uh, Craig Mish, a superstar, absolutely a superstar. Uh, I, 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 I will tell you, I really think I really think our network has a chance. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. I really think we got a chance. Good morning to you all. All right, let's get right to it. And today, what we're going to do, got a lot of, uh, we got the trading thing coming up, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. And um, you got to give Vladimir Guerrero. 91 home runs on Monday, and of course that set the record for a single round of 29. And then, look, he ran out of gas. Pete Alonso wins it, that we know. But here's the here's the interesting part: the 91 homers he hit on Monday uh, surpassed the uh, Detroit Tigers' total of 77 home runs. <laughs> and to be fair, the Tigers aren't the only team that Guerrero bested on Monday. The Miami Marlins. Uh, have only hit 68 home runs, and the Kansas City Royals only have 87, and the Giants have 88. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's a lot of work for one night, wouldn't you think? All right, a lot of work for one night. Uh, no question about it, okay? So the uh, uh, a big night for Vlad. I started putting up some Twitter polls. If you'd like to pay attention to them, go on to my Twitter feed, at Lenny Melnick. Uh, I got some polls. Number one, should the All-Star game be uh, based on merit or uh, fan favorites? And number two, and as Chacha mentioned, who will be drafted earlier next year, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or Eloy Jimenez? That, I think, is pretty interesting, okay? So, uh uh, if you don't mind, go up to Twitter and cast your ballot. And I want to tell you, how many miles, you know, with the 91 home runs, how many miles, if you added up the total distance of all his home runs, how many miles do you think he hit last in that home run derby? How many miles, okay? Uh, has he, by the way, do I have sound? I just want to make sure. Uh, take a guess on how many miles of home runs he hit in one night. He had a home run. He had more home runs in three hours than he hit his entire pro career, and he hit more home runs in every round than his father did in two home run derbies combined. So there you go. All right. So uh, you have Vladimir Guerrero Sr. had been in two home run derbies and hit a total of 19 home runs in four rounds, and. Uh, so a tremendous performance, no question. Now, over on the other side, this is pretty interesting. Morning, dude. Morning, everybody. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, my sound is good. Thank you. And the bullshit has stopped. Thank you. Uh, and we're taking a trip. We're going to Cleveland. We just found out yesterday that we are waiting for uh, press passes to go to Cleveland on Wednesday night. It is uh, Trevor Bauer bobblehead night, and uh, if we get those press passes, we will show you a picture of Andrea hugging Trevor Bauer. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. I mean, you know, look, uh, Trevor Bauer, number one on her list, and I'm stupid enough to take her to Cleveland to meet uh, uh, her number one guy, Trevor Bauer. But we're going to, so we're hoping to get press passes. That should be pretty good, and um, we'll, we'll see, and hoping to see Easy Kill. Uh, somewhere on the 16th as we head to Cleveland. A little out of our way, but who wouldn't go out of their way to see Easy Kill? Now, one of the interesting things about Pete Alonso winning the home run derby, and Met fans, of course, have to be happy. I mean, with all the shit going on with the Mets, and we'll get to that in a second, but 
how happy are the Mets fans? Even when something, so Alonzo wins the home run derby. Uh, he is vaulted into the spotlight as one of the best prospects in Major League Baseball. He beats Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And how happy are the Mets fans to remember that his service time was not manipulated? Okay? And he's helping the team. But do you think that the Mets and the Mets fans are going to regret that uh, they only have him for control for six years, not for seven? And that puts the pressure on the Mets because now they really have to uh, extend him. They really have to extend him. It's uh, pretty unbelievable, okay? So uh, uh, even when they th- even when something good happens for the Mets, there's always a negative side. Even when, I mean, it can't get worse. You know, the Cano and Diaz deal uh, could be one of the worst deals in a long time. Uh, so Cano is one of the just five players on this team with at least 250 plate appearances, four or fewer home runs, um, OPS below 650. Diaz has uh, an earned run average of 26% bl- below the Major League Baseball average, factor, factoring in all the league, uh, you know, the, the league and the parks. And t- to really add to it, Jay Bruce and Anthony Swarzak were traded back into the National League East where they not only have performed well for the Phillies and Braves, but they've been Met killers. And then you take Justin Dunn and Jared Kalinick, who were invited to the Futures game, making them among the best Major League Baseball prospects this year, and Kalenic particularly climbing the prospect list. And then, of course, comes uh, Game Tuesday when Rob Manfred said that uh, in regards to the DH being adopted to the National League as part of the collective bargaining agreement, uh, the earliest would be 2022. And I think uh, one of the reasons that Brody liked Cano was he thought maybe the DH would be, uh, I mean, look, Cano's contract is age 36 and 4. I mean, this is, this is not good. Cano will be 39 in 2022, right? So not a good situation. So the Peter Alonso thing, do you think that the Mets are going to regret not extending him? Uh, Shane Bieber, only the third player in the All-Star Game history to win the most valuable. But there wasn't really a standout MVP but he was the third player in all-star history to win the MVP award in his home ballpark. Can anybody tell me the other two all-star game most valuable players to win it in their home ballpark, okay? Uh, and I'm talking about in the late 90s. That's when it was. Who were the other two to win the uh, um, MVP in the uh, all-star game in their home ballpark? Anybody want to give that a chance, okay? Uh, and for those listening in, don't forget, all you got to do is come to the site, uh, register for free, absolutely free, come into the chat room, and then if you want your fantasy sports questions answered, you have a choice. You can either come into the chat room and get uh, some among the best minds ever right here in the chat room, or and you can get uh, our phone number, and you can give Andy and I a call uh whenever you like okay so there you go will smith by the way two home runs allowed to left-handed hitters in the last three seasons combined pretty good for will smith and then in the all-star game joey gallo comes up the first left-handed hitter he faced boom hits a home run and of course they had the 23 combined strikeouts in the all-star game second most combined strikeouts in any nine inning all-star game and there you go. And to make matters worse for the New York Mets, after everything else I I just talked about, all right, McNeil comes up, Jeff McNeil comes up, and his face is on the uh, on the scoreboard. But the only problem was it wasn't Jeff McNeil's face. It was Jake DeGrom. <laughs> so no matter what they do, no matter what they do, the New York Mets, right, the Amazons? The Amazons is here in the chat room. All right, it was Jake DeGrom's picture when it was Jeff McNeil up at bat. Yep, the Mets, let's go Mets. Can't beat them, that's for sure. 
And, uh, of course, with the Major League Baseball deadline quickly approaching, rumors surrounding the Arizona Diamondbacks, that's a team to watch because we don't know if they'll be buyers or sellers. There's a couple of other teams. They entered the All-Star break only a game and a half out of the final wildcard berth in the postseason, but it's a very crowded race for the playoffs. And now that we're, we're finding out Robbie Ray drawing a lot of interest. Robbie Ray, and they have a decision to make. The three most interesting players are David Peralta, Robbie Ray, and Zach Reinke. And um, uh, for Robbie Ray, uh, well, well, let's talk about Peralta first, because word has come out that the Chicago Cubs are among the teams very interested. Kenny Rosenthal talks about it in David Peralta who right now is not really healthy, okay? The Cubs among the teams interested if the Diamondbacks sell and make Peralta available. He's a professional hitter, the kind of a hitter that the Cubs need. He'll increase their outfield depth, uh, bolster their lineup against right-handed pitching, and he has one more year of control after this one. Zach Greinke, okay? The Diamondbacks absolutely want to move Zach Greinke. They want to get a prospect ranked in the top 100. It's going to cost the Diamondbacks a minimum of 15 and perhaps upwards of $30 million. Okay? They're willing to just give them away uh, f- to get some kind of relief. Some kind. Not the whole thing. Okay? So, um, uh, it'll be quite a feat for Mike Hazen to make that trade and get a decent return. Quite a feat. And the Yankees now. Here comes the Yankees. Robbie Ray enter earning six million dollars this season with one year of arbitration remaining. Uh, that's the that's the picture the Yankees want. The Yankees and other teams, uh, you know, look the last couple of years they've liked Robbie Ray not simply because he's left-handed, but because of his career. 28% strikeout rate, which is higher than Clayton Kershaw, Madison Bumgarner, and Patrick Corbin, okay? So uh, there you go. That's what's going on with the uh, with Arizona. Very interesting team is Arizona. Also, the Brewers are interested in Robbie Ray, but they don't seem to have the Major League Ready prospects that it would take to get Robbie Ray uh, from um, the... Um, Arizona Diamondbacks. The Red Sox have emerged as the front runners for Zach Wheeler. That's right. They have the Red Sox starters, of course, have struggled. They have a combined ERA of 4.7, well above the league average, which is 4.4. They especially need help at the back end of the rotation. What do they got? Brian Johnson, Darwin's on Hernandez, Hector Velasquez, Ryan Weber, Josh Smith. Uh, they want to put Nate Uvalde in the bullpen. Uh, I'll tell you something. It's pretty uh, ridiculous. The Yankees in the race continue to lead the way in the American League East. No surprise that the Red Sox have their eye on the Wheeler. He has started 19 games this season for the Mets, posting a 4.69 ERA. He's been, uh, look, we all know about Wheeler, but here's the other one. Noah Syndergaard, and ever since he refused to go to the doctor and then wound up on the DL, uh, you speculated that the Mets were going to trade Noah Syndergaard. Now, the uh, the trade uh, doesn't look imminent, but the Milwaukee Brewers are supposedly hot and heavy on Syndergaard and Zach Wheeler, okay? And that's uh, according to John Morosi. Uh, Syndergaard yeah, also has been an intriguing uh, kind of a player to the Houston Astros. So the Mets could be the headline-making team. That's right. They could be headline-making. And, of course, we all thought as Mets fans they were going to be headline-making by uh, uh, being contenders for the for the uh, pennant, but not happening. They're, con- they're going to make headlines possibly by trading Zach Wheeler, who is a free agent, and I don't think the Mets want to offer him $18 million. And Noah Syndergaard, who I think has fallen out of favor with this ball club. Okay? So we'll see about that. 
All right, once again, let me sincerely thank everybody for being here. Good morning to the Beach Bum and the Beer Man and Cam and Cha-Cha and the Amazons. DK Loosh, good morning to you. Danny Boy, good morning. Easy Kill, hoping to see you on the 16th somewhere.